Divers and water lovers, what is something you've found while underwater that you can't explain or scared the heck out of you, serious. While water skiing in the lake one time, Louisiana, when I flew off I landed like pretty much on top of an alligator, I kinda felt my leg hit him and we were like eye to eye when I gasped for air, then he went under. The moments after that were the most terrifying moments of my life because I was so certain it'd feel him bite my foot any second and drag me under. I started screaming and couldn't stop until the boat was back to me. You don't realize how long 2-3 minutes is until you're alone in the open water. Never again for me. I was like 8-9 and snorkeling in Hawaii. I turned around in only a couple feet of water and a turtle rammed me full speed in the face. That scared the heck out of me and broke my goggles. Dunno what the heck it was doing. I was diving with some friends and found a fisherman's glove with a hand still inside it. We brought the glove to the local police and they told us that they hadn't received any kind of report of a guy with a missing hand. Now they have to file a report of a hand missing a body. Scuba diving down a ledge. Dim. A bit murky. Doll's head lodged on the ledge. Face made me scream into my regulator. I was diving in Thailand and we were at a site diving where there were two steep hills underwater full of rock formations, coral etc. Between these two areas was a sandy bottom with scattered rocks ranging between the 1-5 meters across, all full of holes and full of life. We were swimming from one hill to the next and inspecting these rocks along the way. I was swimming along one large one when I get whacked in the side of my stomach very hard. It startled the crap out of me and I quickly back off. The dive instructor noticed and came over and we inspected what happened. That's when we saw a gigantic Murray eel. I'm later told it was a giant Murray. He was absolutely massive. Never seen one so big. Was easily a couple meters in length and was probably as wide as my head. We assume I had passed too close without noticing and he attacked. He hit my BCD and luckily didn't persist. I was diving a spear fishing spot about 30 miles offshore. I was 60 feet underwater. There I was swimming along when I noticed them a school of mahi mahi. There were about 30 maybe 40 of them. These fish were all between 2 and 5 feet long. They were so beautiful with their sides flashing all different colors. That's when I felt the tug on my leg. I looked down at my legs to see a 12 tiger shark pulling on my dive fin and taking me along for the ride. In a second he had ripped the fin off my foot. The shark then swam away but kept circling just at visual range. I think he was still curious about how I tasted. I kept an eye on him the whole time I was swimming back to the boat. Scariest moment I have ever had in the water. I was diving off the Florence or coast with some friends and we found a body on the ocean floor in the creepiest condition possible. He was a surfer who'd gone missing a few days prior so he wore a wetsuit with his legs, arms, and head exposed. Crabs had eaten the flesh from his exposed bits so basically he was a torso with a skull and skeletal limbs. The creepiest dive of my life though, two buddies of mine and I were on a night dive in the Puget Sound hunting prawns. It was about 1am and we're a good 100 feet deep, the pitchest black you could imagine. We used to do this thing on night dives where we'd get in a circle, turn off our lights, then stir up the water and watch the bioluminescence float around us like floating stars in a black watery space. Beautiful. Only this one time we turn off our lights, stir up the water, and the water glows just enough to reveal a fourth person sitting in our circle. We were at a dive resort so it wasn't so odd to see another diver. Only it was 1am. We'd seen no one else prepping a dive at the dock. He was also alone which was odd considering the dangerous conditions of a night dive in those waters. And he had no fins or gloves. I don't know how he swam so well without fins or didn't get hypothermia without boots or gloves. We wore dress suits because it was so cold but this dude was in a wetsuit with exposed skin and we thought we saw a giant gash in one of the legs. So the three of us all notice him and we're too freaking scared to move. I can hear my buddies panting in their eggs, and the guy just smiles and waves, then swims away. That was 100 times creepier than skeleton dude. Whenever you think you're alone and someone just shows up, like in an alley at night, it's weird as frick. 100 feet underwater at night is terrifying. I like kayaking when I get a chance, but one day, in a lake up in Glacier Nation Park, Montana, I saw a small boat, a little, vintage looking, tiny motorboat, the little tiny mini speed boats you always see in 70s movies set in Miami or something, just a few feet underwater, perfectly preserved, 
I could reach down and touch it. There was no signs of damage, no signs of why it sunk. It was strangely eerie. I had to leave because for some reason it just freaked me out. The idea that something could sit inches from the air but still submerge for years. Probably. It made me so uncomfortable and I don't know why. I was diving in Bermuda, 85 feet down, coming out of the wheelhouse of an old fishing boat. I felt something start tapping my hand, turn my head with thoughts of all kinds of horrible terrifying sea creatures reaching out to grab my hand and see a tiny little fish flinging itself into my hand and waving its fins at me as if to say get out of my house go on scram. That was when I discovered you could laugh through a regulator. South Floridian. Here, I grew up fishing and diving, which has led to a few notable stories. The one that sticks out the most was during my high school years. I had just taken a deep breath and gone down to a reef about 30 or so below. My friend was still on the boat above and we were the only ones on the reef. I got down to the bottom and noticed a thin upright pole. Upon closer inspection it was indeed a normal fishing pole, but old and rotten under the water for so long. Right as I was going to grab the pole it was pulled from my hands, just shooting up and away, as if being wheeled in by the other side. It was gone within a matter of seconds, so I started my resurface expecting to see another boat responsible. No boats, nothing in sight, but of course just my friend and his boat. I never bothered telling him, because he would have never believed me anyway. The only explanation I might have is that the pole was still attached to a fish or something, although I doubt it. Still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I was diving off the coast of Fiji and we went through a natural tunnel, like a 10 meter cave passage through a rock formation. So we start swimming through the cave and suddenly the light was weird, like the blue tint from the water has been replaced by a red one. Now all divers will know that this isn't only weird because the color changed but also because red is the first color to disappear after a certain depth, usually between 30 feet minus 10 m and 40 feet minus 13 m, and we were over 70 feet, 23 m, deep. Also bear in mind this was late morning on a sunny day, so imagine this scene, me and my dive buddy are going through an underwater cave and suddenly everything for no apparent reason, is tinted red, a color that you are literally supposed to be unable to see while diving at that depth during the day. Upon exiting the cave, everything was back to blue. I thought it was just me so I didn't signal to go back up. After the dive my buddy asked me if I'd seen the water tint red too. We can't explain it and the folks from the local dive shop had no idea what we were talking about. Scuba diver here. Once I was going along a common route between two underwater waypoints when I found a small shiny object on the sand. I recognized it as part of the assembly which fits on top of the air tank and connects to the breathing regulator. Now this is something you can't breathe without, so it creeped the heck out of me to think about the story of how such a crucial item ended up there. Down in La Jolla, California, they have caves along the coast that you can swim through, if the tides are right. This particular day the water level was high enough that you could swim through this one cave that was pretty narrow. Well, it's my turn to swim and when I'm halfway through a set wave comes in and clears the cave while I'm still in it. I was smashed against the side of the cave, bloodied up the back of my shoulder pretty good, but were thinking, well crap, we just got in the water, we were planning on swimming out to a boy and then back to shore, so I just say frick it, let's do it. Exposed wound in an area known for great white sightings. No big deal. Gotta get a workout in. Well we get to the boy and I just have the biggest sense of dread. We're probably a good 15 minute swim from shore and I start thinking about this wound on my arm just leaking shark bait into this giant vast ocean full of stuff that probably wants to eat me. Sure enough. I'm looking down and I see something swimming towards me. It's dark. I'm like what the frick what the frick what the frick and I started swimming away from it. And I turn around to and I see two more of the same things coming at me from different directions. My face goes completely white. I'm expected to get grabbed and pulled under and never seen again. Nothing happens. My friends can see the look on my face and they're asking me what happened. We all decide to swim in together. My friends were all better swimmers than me. But on that day I beat them all back to the shore easily. I'm practically kissing the sand when I finally made it to the shore and this old man comes up to me and says. You shouldn't be swimming with that cut on your arm. You're all attracting sharks. You don't have to swim faster than the shark. Just faster than the guy next to you. 
On one of my night dives at the Flower Garden Banks Marine Sanctuary in either 2005 or 2006, had my first encounter with a beaded sea cucumber. I thought I stepped out of the real world and into a science fiction fantasy world seeing this long worm with tentacles surrounding its mouth like a cross between a snake and an octopus. Very scary initially, now I look for them because they are pretty cool. On a more recent dive, this spring, although I knew I was going to see it, the whole purpose of the dive after all. Finding the 3 year old 80 pounds golden lab that had been swept away in the spring floods and trapped in debris under a bridge scared the heck out of me when I first found her body visually. Knowing you are looking for it, and actually finding it are two different things, but at least I was able to bring her body home for her family. I grew up diving, as my family owned a dive shop, I've dove all over the globe, but the thing that creeped me out most happened on my local lake, I was about 10, and had taken our ski boat from the dock to a secluded cove to look for an abandoned cemetery, the lake was created by TVA in the 30s and displaced an entire town, leaving several places like this lost in the trees with no access, when I got onto the shore, I found a blanket with all the edges tied together to make a bundle, I didn't open it, but did some exploratory poking, there was obviously a cinder block in there, and the rest was just squishy, after a particularly vigorous poke, blood started seeping through the blanket, I hauled my little ass back to the boat and never looked back, decades later, I still think about that and wonder what was in there. Well I definitely don't love water, but here's mine, was down by the beach, was around 13, my brothers and I went down there to play a lot around then, there's a seagull, they're pretty common around there, flies down to the water to grab a tasty fish, well, it must have misjudged the size, because whatever it was grabbed the seagull and dragged it underwater, dunno what it was, but I didn't want to play in the same water as it. I was kneeboarding one time in a lake not too far outside of my hometown. The water is very murky and dark. Well the front end of the board dipped downward into the water but I kept holding onto the rope. I shot probably a good 20 plus feet deep in a matter of a couple of seconds and when I let go I completely lost my place at space. It was pitch black and I couldn't tell if I was right side up or upside down. Didn't really find anything scary but being that lost in space is truly terrifying. Started buying more buoyant life jackets from that point forward. Was doing a drift dive down in Mexico. Saw a very large grouper off in the distance. Let myself drift towards it. I soon realized it was far bigger than I had thought and I was putting myself in danger. Possibly, this thing could have taken me down too far or damaged my gear or knocked me out. I've seen videos of these things eating 4 foot sharks, and this bad boy was bigger than the ones in the videos. I was a bit shaken after that dive. I was snorkeling in the Caribbean and I got separated from the rest of the group. We had be sticking close to the shore to look at the small fish and things. Touristy stuff. I stayed behind to look at a small school of fish and when I looked up they were all way ahead of me. To catch up, I took a shortcut across deep water. I was swimming along for a while, not seeing any fish or anything, when I just saw a murky outline in the distance. You know, when you're looking at something underwater from a distance and it's just a shape, like that. But it was huge, easily bigger than me, just slowly swimming parallel with me. I didn't take the time to investigate it closer and just swam to shore as fast as I could. Still gives me chills when I think about it. Went snorkeling off the coast of Mozambique near an island when a dugong swam right under me. It was massive. I literally peed myself. Diving in Palau once and we're at about 100 featuring. There's a wall on one side of us. And then the ocean just drops as far as the eye can see on the other side. A tiger shark pulled up next to us and just started swimming next to me like I'm his dive buddy or something. At first I didn't care. But after a few minutes I started to feel uncomfortable. We kept looking at each other, and he was a good 6 foot if not a bit more. After a few minutes a school of yellow fin tuna appeared near us, and all of a sudden that shark decided he wanted one, and just dive bombed out cut one of those tuna in half. In a split second a couple more sharks appeared and cleaned up the rest and they all swam off quietly, like you do. Made me realize how lightning fast those things are, and absolutely badass. Okay here's a fun one, made me feel like a bee at the time, but now I look back and laugh. Snorkeling on the gulf side of Mexico, just after high school, had set up a day beach, 
good location. Water dropped to about 20 feet deep just a short distance offshore. Things are going well. We're seeing just hundreds of fish. Small school of puffers. Didn't even know they schooled, which scared a few people. So at one point, I'm just swimming back up to the shallow beach and turn around to swim backward when I see, I don't know, 612 of these small fish, white bodies with yellow fins, right off the end of my flippers, swimming hard, like, chasing me. Moments later I'm scrambling up on the sand like a shark is right on my ass. Did that whole look around to see if anyone noticed me being a full thing. In retrospect, they probably liked the current I was generating with the flippers or something. I know they weren't dangerous. There's just something truly frightening about so much smaller than yourself being aggressive or chasing you. Snorkel in the Great Barrier Reef. When it was time to get back on the boat the underwater photographer grabbed my attention by pointing down. I looked down and there was this big shark just holding pattern on the bottom. Needless to say I climbed to the boat rather quickly. Surfing off the west coast of Vancouver Island. Sitting there waiting for waves when this big dark shape slithered underneath me and my board. I quickly went to a kneeling position on my board with an audible holy crap balls. Moments later the friendliest face poked up out of the water in front of me. A big curious seal. Curse you seal. You scared the pee out of me that day. Divers in one area of Honduras took to feeding an eel. It was a big ass moray eel. And it got to like divers. Because they always gave it food. One day I was on a dive and nobody gave it food, and the dive master didn't really mention it. Next thing you know this tame moray eel is swimming furiously after a half dozen divers, and they are scared as crap. I hovered about 20 feet above them and watched the mayhem unfold. These people all thought they were going to die, but really that 6 foot moray eel with razor sharp teeth only wanted his doggy snacks. It was my first deep wreck dive, and I was venturing in the hold of a sunken fishing trawler. At the bottom of the dark hold, I found a full-size skeleton. My wife and dive buddy freaked out, and swam straight into the wall. She dropped her dive light, which settled 20 feet below between the skeleton's legs. I dove down alone to get it, because scuba gear is expensive. Up close, that skeleton was an obvious plant. So I'm in Cancun. Mexico with my host family, exchange student. There's this hotel that's surrounded by a river thingy that you snorkel in. I can't sink, lol thanks. Body fat, so I don't have a life jacket. I'm about a mile off swimming into the river when I see something interesting at the bottom. I struggle downwards, the water was maybe 9-12 feet deep, and I see it's a conch shell. What a perfect present for my younger host sister. It's her birthday today and she's love it. I keep trying to swim to the bottom, only to get pulled back up, over and over by my own mass. It's been 30 minutes and I have a headache. I'm not going to give up that easily. I manage to get a hand on the shell, and pull it toward me. Victory. I have a sudden sharp pain on my stomach. I drop the shell in surprise, and I see a little blood coming out of a new wound. I swim to land, and investigate the mark on the shore. The wound was bizarre, shallow but in a shape that looks like the bite from human molars. I've been pinched by crabs plenty of times, and this looked nothing like a crab pinch. Didn't feel like one either. I couldn't figure out what was living in that shell. I scoured the internet and my zoology textbook, but nothing matched my bite marks. To this day, I still don't know what bit me. You have been visited by the be humble be stay humble and believe in yourself. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.